In this problem, we're going to look at a couple of molecules, one that's fairly complex for us and one that's fairly simple. We want to know if they're polar or not, and then we want to know what kind of forces, intermolecular force of attraction, will hold them together. So we're starting with isopropyl alcohol. Now I gave you the chemical formula here and I gave it to you in a weird way uh, because it helps me draw its Lewis structure. So isopropyl alcohol is a three carbon chain. Uh, that's actually the prop means. Uh, and then the isopropyl is actually telling me the shape. So this three carbon chain has hydrogen CH3. That's our first molecule. Then I have the CHOH. So I have this hydrogen that comes off of this and then I have an oxygen and then I have a hydrogen and this would have my two electron groups, my lone pairs there, and then I have CH3 again. This is the molecule uh, isopropyl alcohol. That's commonly rubbing alcohol. Now, carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. The difference between those is 0.4. That means all of these bonds are nonpolar. But this oxygen carbon hydrogen group, that's a little bit different. So what I'm doing is I'm seeing that I actually have multiple central atoms. I've got this thing, and it's central to this section of the molecule, and then I have this thing, which is central to this section of the molecule. And so uh, we've got this carbon hydrogen, nonpolar, 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 carbon carbon is clearly nonpolar. Then this carbon oxygen, so I'm just going to draw that over here, carbon oxygen hydrogen. Um, on this thing, we have another central atom, and it's this oxygen atom. So I've got this carbon-oxygen bond. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. There's a big enough difference that there's actually uh, a dipole here. And so carbon is actually going to end up slightly positive and oxygen slightly negative. Uh, and then we've got this hydrogen over here, which is also going to end up slightly positive and oxygen slightly negative. Not only that, this is going to be bent um, because I've got oxygen as my central atom and it's four electron group geometry, which is tetrahedral, but two lone pairs, which is bent, right? So this is actually carbon bonded to an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. And so we get our two lone pairs over here. And then this last group is also a nonpolar group full of nonpolar bonds. So it turns out that isopropyl alcohol actually is polar. Most of it is nonpolar. This ends nonpolar. This ends nonpolar. This beats nonpolar. But this oxygen atom does end up uh, with a slight negative part and the hydrogen ends up with a slight positive part. So we do have a polar molecule. Uh, NF3, also we've discussed, is a polar molecule because it's trigonal pyramidal. This electron group pushes all of these fluorines closer to each other, and then the fluorines attract electrons towards themselves. So we end up with a partial minus over here, a partial positive over here. And so I have two polar molecules. This will be a dipole-dipole interaction. Now, every molecule ever will have London forces, so this is also going to have London forces. Um, but uh, it is not dipole-induced dipole, and it is not um, pull a hydrogen bonding because while the isopropyl alcohol could do a hydrogen bond, it's got that OH group. Uh, NH3, NF3 cannot. Now, NH3 actually could, but this isn't NH3. It's NF3.